And the Oscar most definitely does not go to... Excellent! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Oscar-winning actors who sucked in other movies. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at Academy Award-winning actors who gave a less than stellar performance either before or after they were honored with the coveted Golden Trophy. However, we're only selecting actors and actresses who won Oscars in the acting categories. Wait, you gonna have a problem? No, 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 no. So, fans of Ben Affleck will be grateful to find out he's dodged a bullet here, as he's only won Oscars for writing and directing, not acting. I think my story is the only thing between you and a gun to your head. Number 10. Whoopi Goldberg as Katie Coltrane, Theodore Rex. For what it's worth, I've got you covered. Having won the Best Supporting Actress Award for Ghost in 1991, Whoopi Goldberg was fresh off the success of Sister Act 2 when she signed on to make this bizarre direct-to-video bomb about a cop who's teamed up with an animatronic talking dinosaur in the future. Possibly seeing its potential for disaster, Goldberg dropped out of the project after verbally agreeing to star in it. This led to a lawsuit that eventually forced her to hold up her end of the deal. Isn't it a little strange to you that both these guys were made extinct on the same night and they both just happened to work for you? The result was terrible acting even by kids' movie standards. Goldberg's uninspired performance clearly shows. Looking back on Theodore Rex, the comedian has said it's the only project she regrets. And it's also been reported that she never wanted to make it in the first place. Can you blame her? Duh. Number 9. John Voight as Bill Biscayne, Kane, Super Babies, Baby Geniuses 2. I'm Bill Biscayne, and if you touch my diapers, you're fired! Sometimes you look at a bad movie with good actors in it and mutter, what were they thinking? This is one of those cases. I should have stayed young forever. You took all that from me. Generally considered one of the worst films of all time, this dud of a family comedy stars the legendary John Voight as a kidnapping media mogul who wants everyone to stay glued to their television sets as a form of mind control. The sequel to Baby Geniuses sees Voight deliver a performance full of hammy acting, accompanied by a horrible Nazi-esque German accent, and tasteless jokes aplenty. I may not understand your language, but I know what you're thinking. It's hard to believe this Oscar winner agreed to take part in a project like this. That's why I feel so bad that I had to make it any harder for you than it already is. Number 8. Natalie Portman as Padme Amidala, Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Anakin, you're breaking my heart. We may be able to chalk this one up to bad screenwriting. Although a worldwide success, George Lucas's final installment in the Star Wars prequel trilogy is rife with terrible acting and melodramatic lines that would make even the angriest Rancor laugh. Unfortunately, Natalie Portman isn't safe from the criticism as Padme Amidala, the secret star-crossed wife of Anakin Skywalker. I don't believe what I'm hearing. Obi-Wan was right. You've changed. Despite Portman's best efforts to bring as much depth and emotion to her character as possible, the clunky dialogue and her over-the-top emotional reactions make for a performance that falls short of glory though she genuinely does look like she's trying her absolute best to work with what she was given. So this is how Liberty dies. With thunderous applause. Thankfully, Portman redeemed herself five years later with a career-defining performance in Black Swan. What happened to my sweet girl, huh? She's gone! Oh, oh, no. Number 7. Al Pacino as himself, Jack and Jill. Everyone wants my Dunkachino. Can't get enough of my Dunkachino. Sometimes playing yourself is not the best way to go. Already a household name in the art of yell acting, Al Pacino took on the role of, well, Al Pacino in this disastrous comedy co produced, co written, and starring Adam Sandler. It's amazing the way you, you stick up for your brother. It's just. Sounding more like a Pacino imitation being done by Adam Sandler, the Oscar winner outrageously overacts his trademark traits in an uncomfortably awkward performance as himself. Wow! Al Pacino! It's not Al anymore! It's Dunk! Dunkachino? Critics' opinions were split on whether Pacino's performance was a genuine act of parody or a downright joke that was taken too seriously. Ah, uh, you'd think it, but uh, oddly enough, I don't. 
Meanwhile, most critics bashed the film as a whole, and it won in every category it was nominated for at the anti-Oscars, known as the Golden Raspberry Awards. This must never be seen by anyone. Number 6. Christoph Waltz as Benjamin Chudnovsky, The Green Hornet Okay, uh, how, how do I pronounce your name? Ch uh, Ch Tchaikovsky? Chudnovsky. After wooing the world and winning a Best Supporting Actor award for his breakthrough role in Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, Christoph Waltz became a heavily sought-after star in North America. Known for his despicable charm and creepy but serious characterizations, this Austrian-German star landed the role of antagonist Benjamin Chudnovsky in Michel Gondry's underwhelming 2011 action comedy. While still maintaining his sinister but silly persona, critics found Waltz's performance to be dimensionless and unfitting for what was supposed to be an action-adventure comedy, and that it paled in comparison to his Oscar-winning role. Now tremble before your death, for be it my mask or be it your blood, red will be the last color you'll ever see. Fortunately, Waltz was able to win back some fans when he returned to work with Tarantino on Django Unchained, and won his second Best Supporting Actor Oscar. So say I return in about Five days time. Number five, Forrest Whitaker as Kerr, Battlefield Earth. Ooh, I can see that. Years before he won the Best Actor Award for his terrifying portrayal of Ugandan dictator Idi Amin, Forrest Whitaker was cast in the shipwreck of a sci-fi project known as Battlefield Earth. I don't know what you're so down about. Universally panned by critics and audiences alike, Whitaker's performance is one of many in the film to be recognized as awful. And this despite the fact that he'd already proved himself to be a talented actor. What are you doing? <laughs> With plenty of overacting, banter that was likened to an Abbott and Costello routine despite its intended seriousness, and various instances that elicited unintentional laughter, the sci-fi action film led even the most open-minded moviegoers to scratch their head in confusion when trying to figure out why the respected thespian would agree to such a role. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Number 4. Robert De Niro as Fearless Leader, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle Now catch Moose and Squirrel, and next time use the CDI on them! We are talking to you, Bobby. Have you ever watched a movie and thought, he or she must have only done this for the money? This is probably what moviegoers were thinking when they watched this awful big screen adaptation of the classic cartoon. Sometimes it's not so easy being fearless leader. Among an already star-studded cast, two-time Oscar winner Robert De Niro took on the role of the film's main antagonist. Featuring cheap throwbacks to his earlier, more respectable roles, De Niro gives us a perplexing performance that caused the public to shudder. Although he gave another cringe-worthy performance in 2016 with Dirty Grandpa, we're still wondering if De Niro was merely looking for a paycheck when he made Rocky and Bullwinkle. Quiet, idiot! Number 3. Cuba Gooding Jr. as Dr. Theodore Ted Brooks, Snow Dogs Ah! Where's those dogs? What? We showed him the money and it didn't pay off. After scoring a Best Supporting Actor win for Jerry Maguire, Cuba Gooding Jr.'s path to stardom seemed to be set in stone. However, a series of lackluster post-Oscar roles caused him to fade into obscurity for a while. What is it with you people? One of the most noteworthy duds he starred in was the Disney family film Snow Dogs. With a cast that also includes badly partially animated dogs and fellow Oscar winner James Coburn, the film's cheap laughs and shallow script make for an embarrassing entry on Gooding's resume. Never underestimate Theodore Brooks. DDS. <laughs> Number 2. Nicolas Cage as Edward Malus, the Wicker Man. Why are you looking at me like that? Something bad is about to happen. Even if you haven't seen this movie, you probably still know some of the lines. This 2006 remake of a horror cult classic sees Nicolas Cage at his most melodramatic in what is supposed to be a scary film. Phoning in his performance with his trademark overacting and silliness, Cage's role in the 2006 version of The Wicker Man has spawned endless memes involving bees getting in our eyes. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Out of my eyes! Coming about 10 years after he won an Oscar for his captivating role as a self-destructive alcoholic in Leaving Las Vegas, 
This unintentionally hilarious performance has, to a certain extent, overshadowed at least some of Cage's body of work ever since. I'm a policeman. See my badge? Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. Your Grace, I, I understand you were close with Bronwyn Felworthy. Yes. I will harvest that planet tomorrow before I let her take it from me. You must have some big balls coming in my face like that. Number one, Halle Berry as Patience Phillips and Catwoman, Catwoman. Yeah. It was just what her career needed. Okay, not really. After winning an Oscar for a brave role in 2001's Monsters Ball, Halle Berry was cast in the lackluster Catwoman film. Catwoman. Mm -hmm. You heard of her? Oh yeah. Focused more on sexiness than actual plot development, the superhero film was panned by critics and audiences alike for its poor screenwriting, lack of in-depth characters, and weak acting. Ever since its release, Catwoman has been labeled as one of the worst films ever made. And it was even nominated for multiple Razzie Awards. Game over. Guess what? It's overtime. Among those nominations was a worst actress nod for Barry herself. In a show of humble tactfulness, Halle Berry, Oscar in hand, accepted the award and gave a great thank you speech. Hey, at least she had a sense of humor about it. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.